Throwbacks. I'd like to welcome you out to question and answer classes. These are classes that our master teacher, Pamela Babby at noon, had established for the, over the last, what, 40, 50 years? 50 years. 50 years. And there's all the numbers, you know, so many numbers, so many years. So what we do is, uh, you know, is this is classes about, you know, answering, you know, questions, you know, one a while. You know, because our master teacher has been falsely incarcerated for the, what, last almost 11 years because of the information that he's been putting out for so many years that touched so many people and helped so many people worldwide, they was afraid that he was actually going to raise people from being mortals to gods. So our thing is, like, any questions you have to ask, then with our doctrine, we, you know, the mic is open and if you have any questions, we can start it right now. So any questions? Anybody going to read the new books? Up on new updates? How long have you been reading the books? But, you know this guy right here. Okay. Oh, you got a question? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Okay. Good to see you. Yeah. yeah a lot of this information. Our teacher, math teachers have been. You know, going full circle with. Yeah. Anybody, we can get oh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, in the Mind Scroll, yeah. on page 59, it talks about the, on, on June 26, 20 AD. I'm not sure what this day is for, for referring to. Though, you said June 26, what? 20, 30, 2030 AD. What is yeah. referring to? Though? Uh huh. What is the day referring to? That was ver referring to when the vortex actually closes and it's the last drop off. Because what happened is our master teacher is the man of the hour. In the book of Revelation, when it said the heaven stood still for like about an hour, right? This hour is equivalent to 60 minutes or 60 years. So in 1970, when our master teacher, Pana Badia Nu, incarnated in the body of Malachi Z. York, his job was to raise the golden children to help save the planet. From being in under control of the disagreeable beings or the Luciferians of the amber white, of the amber light, which you call the Illuminati, or the illuminated ones, right? You know what I'm saying? Because you have two Illuminatis. The first one is of the green light, which is the positive beings, and of the, then you have the amber light that, that came out of the green light of the disagreeable beings, you call the illuminated ones, or the Illuminati, you know what I'm saying? Or the Luciferians. So what happened is the first 30 minutes which is equivalent to 30 years, is when the master teacher took us on a long journey on a short path, where we became known as Nubian Islamic Hebrews or Ansar law. you know what I'm saying? Before that, 1970, we, it was Ansar pure Sufi, and it was Malachi Kobain, or you know, he was known as Amanubi al you know what I'm saying? When he came out with a book called Mechanics of the Mind, the Nine Ball series, and Bible interpretation, misinterp um, Bible, Bible translation, misinterpretation. You know what I'm saying? This is stuff that he wrote in 1967 and 1963. You know what I'm saying? Which is what you call the basis of Wunua. You know what I'm saying? So what happened is from 1970 to the year 2000, like I said earlier, our master teacher took us on a long journey on to a short path. So we were Muslims. But he, what happened is that the spell of Leviathan was so strong during that time, that when he came, give you one wop, we wouldn't take to it. Because we were still into the Jesus spook worship. So what the master teacher did is he had to create another doctrine, but he had to put it, you know what I'm saying, he had to create a doctrine combining wudu wop and create it in, or El Islam. Because he knew that Islam was such a dead, brain dead religion that you won't question nothing. You know what I'm saying? Because you were so caught in the word Aleph, Lam, Lam, Aleph, Ha, you know what I'm saying? Allah, the, the, you, know, the, you know what I'm saying? And you didn't actually say, well, it's not a man, it's not a spirit, it's not an idol, it's just Allah, you feel me? So what happened is, he went into this, he went into this doctrine and put Wunawap in there. This is why the Muslims, Christians, Jews, will always say, well, you do what we do, but there's something about you different than us. It's, you're not practicing the same Islam. But what happened is when Wunawap was actually inserted into Islamic religion, which is actually nothing but a watered-down version of the ancient Nepotan culture, which is Wunawap, right? You know hear I me? Mean? They didn't realize that the, my, my, um, by putting Wunawap in with Islam, it took it to its highest point. 
So that's why as Ansars, we were the best Muslims on the planet Earth because we follow everything to a T. You know what I'm saying? And with Wudu Wap, by Wudu Wap being inserted into the religion of Islam, it also showed you the flaws and the mistakes that was inside the Quran. You feel me? Then we came out of that in 1992 and became Nubian Hebrews. We well, popped in the same thing with the Torah. Inserted Wudu Wap into it, and then we became the best Jews on the planet, or Hebrews. But then what happened is it also exposed all the stuff that was wrong about it also, too. Then we went into what you call Holy Tabernacle Ministry, Shoshone, you, you might see Native American Nubian tribe, you feel me? And the same thing with that, where he actually gave me the history on a Native American side of our bloodline in the culture, you feel me? Of the Christian culture that we was practicing as doctors, doctors of divinity, where we actually got degrees and studied the different schools of religion that we were in at the time. Then we came into the United Nations of the um, United Nawabian Nation of Moors, which is with the Moorish African sciences that, that, that we were practicing dealing with sovereignty, UCC, you know, the sovereign, you know, autonomy and everything, you know what I'm saying? Then we went to the ancient mystic order of Melchizedek, as well as the ancient, um, the sons of the Green Light, which was in an Islamic school, and then we was in the Hebraic school, or the Christian school, we was under the ancient mystic order of Melchizedek, which was a mystic school that we practiced, you feel me? Then we went into the ancient Egyptian order, which is the source of all religions. All these doctrines that we mastered over the years, right, all led to Egypt. But what happened, the problem was that when we got into the ancient Egyptian order, we lost discipline. We were still asking religious questions, and we were all happy with the black power movement or conscious community doctrine that we were kicking as Ansars, Nubian Hebrews, and so on. But when we got into the African culture, people couldn't assimilate into their natural nature. And we were still thinking things as a religious state. So Pop had to pull back and then he had to clean us back up again through what you call the Lodge, the OES, you know what I'm saying, the Order of the Eastern Stars in the Shrine, which is, which is which you, which you have to understand is that when the Illuminati start taking over different sacred societies, they infiltrated into the OES, the Masonic Order, and the Shrine, you know what I mean? So these guys were hiding in these sacred orders. And what happened is when they start infiltrating these, which is the world, I start infiltrating these orders, they start becoming, getting predominant, you know, in positions that you, you know, in these, in these lodges. This is why over the years, people saying, oh, Masons are devil worshippers. They're not devil worshippers. It says that you got a devil worshipper in the seat of masonry. You hear me? And what they do is that when they get to a higher level, they start recruiting other predominant members of the lodge Oh yes, or the shrine to be to cross over into their Luciferian order. So when you get to the high, like I mentioned teacher in the book of Paul, the year 2000, what to expect? The master teacher said when a 33, the Mason, when you hit 33, this is when they decided to say, we're going to introduce you to the Luciferian order that has nothing to do with masonry now. This is why you see these videos and these entertainers who join these orders, and then actually when they get to a certain level, they introduce them to the Luciferian order, but they're using Egyptian ancient symbols that came out of Africa, which is our stuff. And this is why you see Christians, Muslim Jews always saying, oh, Egyptians are devil worshippers. No, you got a devil worshipper, warlock and witches, using African symbols, just like the swastika, with an ancient Hindu by way of an ancient Egyptian symbol. But when you had a person, a warmonger, and a mass murderer, serial killer, they out of Hitler who pissed the symbol on his clothes and said this represents the Gestapo or the third um, Nazi party and then he kills 60,000 Jews but they said it was 6, 000, 6 million Jews, right? Then they said, oh, he, that symbol is evil. But you can find the same symbol in India and China as a positive image, you feel me? But when you see it in America and you wear a swastika and say, oh, he's a Jew hater, you hear me? They actually changed the meaning of the symbol to something negative, you feel me? So during this time, when the master teacher got the year 2000, this is what you call a long journey on a short path because it takes a person a lifetime to become a Christian. It takes a person a lifetime to, be, to become a Muslim, to practice you know, Islam to its you know, highest extent. You know what I'm saying? It takes a person a lifetime to become a Jew, but we did it in such a short time, on, you know what I'm saying? That's why a long journey on a short path. So by the year 2000, was in 30 minutes or 30 years of half of that hour of the hourglass, you feel me? So we were in what you call the Pisces era, you know what I'm saying? 
the age of the water. And when you deal with the age of the water, you're dealing with the water-based religion. This is why they always gave you something like, oh, we're going to give you a shahada. You see? That's dealing with Islam. You, and they're baptized by water. You say you got baptism in the church by what? Water. In the Jewish religion, they baptize you by what? Water. So these are water-based religions dealing with the Pisces. You know what I'm saying? Which is also coincide with the moon cycle of the last 6,000 years that we were practicing this culture in a moon cycle. Feel me? This is why you have the word Nawab in with a B. You know what I'm saying? Because in, this, in, in the Semitic languages, there's no P sound. So when, and when we was asked our law community under the religious doctrine, Egypt was the bad guy. But people said, well, how can you say Egypt is the bad guy? You put out what's called ancient Egypt and the Pharaohs and the Sinus and Pyramid. Because we were still Egyptian by the way of the word Nubian. You know what I'm saying? And everybody knows that when you look at the Nubian ancient culture, you see pyramids and the same thing you see in Egypt, but it predates Egypt. You feel me? So it wasn't like Pop was trying to move away from our culture, even though we were practicing an Islamic culture, we had a subculture that was being born, that's going parallel to it, which is the Nubian culture, also a Hebraic culture also, at the same time. But if you look at the, the, the big picture, these three cultures, these two other two cultures actually came out of the Nubian culture. You feel me? So what happened is, in this, in this, in this, this, this doctrine, you hear me? The B was under the religious spell. We couldn't use a P sound because there's no P's in the Semitic languages. You can only find it in ancient languages that predates the Semitic languages. That's why you say, you'll say Fatiha or Fatah, which is opener in Arabic, but in the Egyptian language we say Patah. You know what I'm saying? With a P sound. You feel me? So in the school of religion, the Egyptians were bad. Because we had to submerge ourselves in these religions. So what you thought was bad, right? which is actually was good in ancient culture, was bad to us in religion. You feel me? This is why people didn't understand, well, son, you're contradicting yourself. No, we're not contradicting yourself. If I'm going to be a Christian, then Islam is the enemy. Because I don't agree with your doctrine that Muhammad is the last prophet. If Christianity is, is bad, then as a Muslim, Jesus Christ was not crucified. But you said he was. You feel me? In Judaism, you say that um, you follow the Ten Commandments, but in Judaism we follow 613 commandments. You feel me? So we, when we practice these schools, we had to actually become the best of that school. You feel what I'm saying? So anything that was not coincided with that doctrine would be uh, considered disagreeable or evil to us. You know what I'm saying? So what happened, a lot of people don't understand that every time we change the school, of course it was contradicting because you cannot define this school with this school. They have to be at odds with each other because they contradict each other. So if I practice a Native American culture, I'm not going to be feeling no Islamic culture. If I practice Islamic culture, I'm not feeling a Christian culture. If I practice Christian culture, I'm not feeling a Jewish culture. You feel me? But we went to all these different cultures, so every time we went to this culture, the beauty of Pop's doctrine is that Wuno Wild was able to adapt to each of these schools. And by him doing that, we knew that we were better than them Doctrine wise, because we had a secret weapon, which is Wunawak, that was actually inside each of the school we was going through. So when Pop came out of Islam, all he did was pull it out. Let me pull Islam out. You hear me? Now we're new Hebrew. Let me pull the Jewish out. Let me pull the Christianity out. Let me pull this out. So when he pulls it all back, guess where we at? We're in AO, ancient Egyptian order. But what happened is cats, the people were losing their minds because they were still trying to teach the Egyptian deities like they were Christian, Islamic, and Jewish deities. So the old man said, okay, we've got to go into the lodge. Because everybody knows that the lodge is the European version of the ancient temple reign. So we had to cover everything. Whatever you were indoctrinated with, the master teacher had to create his version of which you were put under the spell of. Because what happened is he can't control the spell of the Vietnam because you're still under it. But he can control the, 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 the cure for it by creating his own version of it and then he weeds you out of it. This is like a message he said years ago. In order for you to go to Africa, you had to take a shot. So they give you a small doses of whatever disease that you're getting that you could be exposed to so your body can build up antibodies. This is what he did over here. He was building up antibodies, the doctrine that you were studying so you could get stronger and stronger. He said, well, I don't need Christianity no more. And people said, how can you do that? You, you've been a Christian all your life because now you have realized that it's really the same story, but it's your spin on it. 
I don't want your spin. You know what I'm saying? I want my original story, story not your spin on my story. Our story, you feel me? So the whole thing is this, is that we sit here all day and say, the black power, black power, I'm proud to be black. No, you're saying that I'm proud that my skin is brown. But what happened is this, with your skin comes a doctrine. Do you understand what I mean by that? What is the difference between a fish and a, and a bird? How they breathe. How they breathe, right? But what, what makes them unique? Well, they swim and one fly. Exactly. Now, do the eagle have the same skin as a fish? No. Because the fish is in a water environment, so it has to have scales to protect it from the elements of the water. Now, an eagle has feathers to protect its skin from the harsh wind factor that hits it at the speed that it's traveling, right? That means that their armor or their cloak or they have on over their body, over their flesh, is conducive to what? Their nature, of their environment. So if I have a camel in the desert inside the North Pole, it's not going to survive because of climate. If I have a bear in, in, in the desert, it's not going to survive in that, in, in that environment because it's not their natural nature. As a Nagaru, your complexion is suited for an area. And in this area that you call Afafra Eka, right? Your body is conducive to that natural environment. So when they take you out of your natural environment and bring you to another environment that has nothing to do with your complexion, you're practicing a doctrine that goes against your whole nature. You're eating foods that you're not supposed to be eating because you're supposed to be eating the food of your, of your environment. You're putting on clothes that have nothing to do with your complexion. You hear me? Because you're not in your natural environment. Because in your natural environment, you start adapting to the environment. And when you adapt to your environment, you come up with a doctrine on how you survive. And it's, and it's, and it's, a, doc, you know, it's, and it's, it's a manual dealing with you as a physical being. And as a physical being, you have to adapt to your environment. And when you adapt to your environment, you create your culture. And your culture goes according to your environment. Just like Chinese live in an environment, and everything they do is in the surrounding of their environment, so they practice their natural nature. Same thing with the Hindu. Same thing with European. But you have been taken out of your environment, brought into another environment, which actually was your original environment also, because they both were one at one time, right? But what happened is they changed the doctrine of this environment that they took you to, right? And, get, and put a whole new culture in place when you came here. Now this culture that you call pop culture is Illuminati culture. And you're practicing it because you speak English, you eat, you eat European foods from different parts of, in, of, of Europe, right? You ever see a TV show where a guy was eating all types of foods? He goes around and he gets sick when he eats certain food, right? Because it's not part of his natural nature to eat certain food and his body rejects it. But you spent so much time here in America, you wasn't here 400 years ago when the slaves were throwing up European food. Because remember, you see a lot of these slave women, they, they, they ate the food and started throwing it up. They got sick. A lot of them died from food poisoning. But over the time, they, they, they started adapting. But it's not naturally yours. So your body is eventually starting. Then you wonder why you got sickle cell and this and that and that. You're like, well, I got this in my family because of the foods you've been eating. You've been eating bad foods. Because as a young person, you don't feel it until you get older. Then you're on the dialysis machine. You know? So what happened is your natural nature, but you're practicing someone else's nature. So you can't say black power. Because when you're saying black power, you're talking about your skin color. But now your, the mind, what, what, what makes you, okay, besides the skin, what goes with the skin? A doctrine, a culture. But you're not practicing it. So you can't say black power to me because I don't know what's in your heart and in your mind and what you're thinking because you are a practice, you're, you're like a black Caucasian. <laughs> Talk about black power. You can't, say, you can't say to me black power and you work for the white man. You can't call him the devil and you work for the white man. You can't say, oh, I don't like his movie, but you pay to go see his movie. Oh, it's about, it should be about some black hero, but you go see Captain America. You feel me? We all guilty of that. Cause we get, look. Nobody want to see Boys in the Hood 50 times. Mr. Society, but they keep putting the same, nobody wants to see Love Jones repackaged as his best man, and Jason Lyrics. But it's the same, you know, Love and Basketball, Delivered from Evil. It's the same, come on, we, 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 I 
live, I live this every day. I see Poison Hood every time I go down the block. You hear me? <laughs> so why would you want to keep selling the same movie? I want to see a black version of Superman. He don't got to be Superman, but show me something. No, not a reader of man, you hear me? <laughs> so put some money into it. You hear me? The best black movie he had so far was Blade. They had to stop that real quick. It was too powerful. Right. You know what I'm saying? Will Smith was going to come out with the last pearl, and they shut that down real quick. So you, you want to keep me in Brooklyn Finest? You know what I'm saying? Jump the Broom, Tyler Perry. You know what I'm saying? We got no epic movies. The last epic movie he had was by Shaka Zulu and, and Roots. And you see what happened to that. You see the, the end result of that, right? You know what I'm saying? So it's like, we don't have our, our icons. So we say we're proud of, right? But we have to go to them and say, okay, that was a great movie. Oh, Avatar was all that. But there was no niggas in Avatar. <laughs> you know what I mean? And niggas that had Avatar was not the the not me. But they were blue, you know? So at the 2000, right, is the second half of the 30 minutes, or 30 years, from the year 2000 to 2030. This is with the on tweet right here represented, see our master teacher. The second resurrection, you know what I'm saying? Or this, come now we're in the what? Sun cycle. The n next 6,000 years. So the first cycle, we was in the moon cycle, was the regular unk. Now we're in the second resurrection, is why we have the unk tweet. And they don't understand it. And they try to say, well, y'all made that up. No, you can actually go to ancient temple, right? And they have it on the wall. This is just an Awapian version of an unk tweet. Then you get the other unk tweet that we got double. Unks, stems on it. It's not, and then they say in the, in the Nepotin, ancient Egyptian language, it's you know the same word, unctui on it. It's just that you, we never told you about it because we never broke it down to you. You? You thought you had it all figured out, Mr. White Man. But your snitches have, can't even break the doctrine down. Because you have to send your snitches in here to learn from us because you can't comprehend how we communicate. Because if you're so smart, then why do you need a snitch? Why do you need an informant to inform you if you know everything? I don't know why he got a 200 pair of Jordan and a Mercedes Benz. So I'm gonna have to create me an informant. How do you get his money? How do you make that record? How are you making that music? What's hiring you for? Well, how do you do a song for it? We need to do a remix, puppy. So we figure out your formula. Then we figure your formula out, we don't need you no more. You know what I'm saying? Now we got, uh, what's the guy? Jake One and the different white producers right now, like uh, Scott Storch. Oh, uh, Drake, try to do your beats. Oh, uh, we'll, we'll get the Jew boy to work on you and we'll figure your formula out later. Right or wrong? Okay, when he came out, he, we thought it was Drake beats he was doing. He was making Dr. Drake beats for Fat Joe and on Terra Swat. And make a lot of money. He thought, is that Drake beat? No, that's, that's Scott Storch, the Jew guy. You hear me? But this is what they do they take your formulas. So from the year 2000, 2030, at the year 2000 marked the end of the devil's rule. You hear me? Mm -hmm. Now we're in the 2030, 2030, like you said, June 26, 2030, is when it's time for us to grow. So, so they be able to wipe the Illuminati off the planet. Mm -hmm. And then you'll come back and take your right place. Because what happened is we are originally growing by this planet. So we keep the planet together. So they had to, in order for us to take rulership, first you have to be back in your right state of mind. I can't put you in charge and you still thinking like a white man. Look at your black entertainers. If, if how many know about Jay Z? You know about Jay, right? They say he's a successful black business man, right? He has five, what, four or five hundred million dollars in his bank account, right? Mm -hmm. Now here's the question: Before Jay Z, right, there's a lot of black millionaires, right? Mm -hmm. And you saw somebody say, like, "How did he make his money?" Right? This is a capitalist society. You have to shut down the poor in order for you to get rich. Now you're thinking like, ain't no way this black, my own black people going to do us wrong. You know what I mean? I'm not saying every last one of them, but it's a formula they use. If you practice Caucasian economics, you're going to have to step on somebody. And somebody's going to have to suffer. You know what I mean? So now, look at Jay-Z, his career, how he got started. He was a hype man for Jazzo. Couldn't get no record deal. Worked it with Dame Dash. Put this up together. Got a distribution deal. Got a, got a major deal. Got a label deal. Start signing a lot of artists. What happened? Every time an artist got successful, they went up to another notch. We split the money right here, go to another liar. But we don't need him no more because he, can't, he, wants, he peaked. 
Christian, if anybody rock and it was Christian, the, the R&B singers and, uh, and Siegel at the time, yeah. right? Got to a certain level, Siegel took them to here, they had a mill. Yeah. You know, they brought Bleak in, then they brought these guys in, you know what I'm saying? They brought the state property, Jack got hired, he got street credibility. You know what I'm saying? He had Philly Cats, and they took him to the next level. Oh, he must be the real deal, because he got Philly Cats around him, right? He stepped to those guys, and you know, anybody know about Jay-Z? The more money he kept making, the more he started portraying people that put him on. You know what I mean? Jazzo, and so on, right? Even on source money. He took dissing his people that got him started in the game, and then he started using his artists to get him higher, and then what happened? He started getting that you money. Uh, we don't need um, Damon no more. We'll do it like this. You tell them so, we'll buy it. Then we'll give you a label back to you. We got to get them guys out of the way, right? He did that. Then he retires. He gets all his masters back. But he couldn't get reasonable that Damon Dash. So he killed him. Like, you don't sell Rock and Roll, we'll shut you down. He forced the guy to sell him a closing line to Jay. Then Jay sells to them. Now, the white man owns Rockefeller, but Jay still fronts it. Like, he's still CEO. You can still be CEO, but not the owner of a company. Am I right or wrong? You're right. You know what I'm saying? So now watch this. He shuts down state property, comes out of retirement, and signs a new distribution to Rock Nation. They put it like, you can't, you can't make any songs with any of those guys at party, but he take Kanye with him. So he stepped on them to get that next deal. He steps on this, and now he's throwing clubs, and doing this. He steps on people, and he's breaking off. This is what millionaires do. You never saw it before, but you see it right there. This is living proof of how they work their magic, and how they, they step on the little man. You know what I'm saying? And they've been doing this for years. You just never saw it. You never saw the backwater deals that Oprah was doing, you know, her stuff. You never saw the deals with Cosby, or all these different millionaires. But you have people, you know, cry about them, and people say, oh, you're just a hater. This hater never successful businessman. But people, these guys were stealing people's scripts, ideas, you know saying, in their businesses, and they make it seem like, I'm, 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 I'm a businessman. And if I rob you and take your stuff from you, they say, what? Don't take it personal. It's only what? Business. We don't, we don't work like that. We are up for by each other. I'm gonna do my own thing. That's not that's not African mantra. I do what I want to do. We don't do that. Only one person does that. I do what I want. I'm going to your country. Do what I want. You hear me? I ain't gotta listen to you. I'm my own man. In Africa, we're tribal. We're a community. We don't. That was never in our society. That 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 type of thinking never worked. And if it did, guess what happened? You got exiled. Oh, you doing your own thing? You don't have to be here. Go. We didn't kill you, we didn't lock you up, we just exiled you from the community. You know how it goes. They still do it in some, some parts of Africa, you know what I'm saying? But now people are like, they got cities, they get jobs, I, I don't need to try no more, I can do my own thing. Oh, I do what I want to do. That's not our culture. This is a European state of mind. We always up for and by each other, but now we want to do what they want to do. How you can do what you want to do. Ain't about being under no leaders. Oh, yeah. According to nature, it doesn't work like that. Because if, if a lion was to break off from his pride, I'll do what I want to do. What would happen to him? The hyenas would rip him apart. You only strong as your numbers. Nature don't work like I do what I want to do. Because I do what I want to do because you kill nature. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so this is what the year 2030 is. You feel me? Any more questions? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Go ahead, ask questions. Go ahead. I know you have more questions than that. Oh, yeah, yeah. And with that, I'm going to pass the mic over to my brother. Yeah, my aunt, a cat, I too ready. That's it, brother. I was reading in the books, and I want to understand how do we get our powers back, so to speak. Well, it, I, I'm looking, I'm seeing it as uh, it's going to be generational. It's not going to maybe come to us directly, and it'll come through our seed. Is that correct in that in that progression, as far as how we're supposed to get our you know our natural powers? When back? you say when you say powers, what do you mean? Well, you know, with the well, well the, I'll, I'll put it this way: when, what what are you reading that concludes um, you saying when we get our powers? Well, back? I talk about the higher senses with the clairvoyance and uh, the psychometry. I, I remember reading reading it. Well, so I'm just thinking, I said, okay, well. If we're gradually getting back of the tumbling of our of our uh, DNA, when is if it's not going to be through us 
as the beginning, but it'll go through all seed. Is that what is going to happen, or how's that how's that going to transpire? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Okay, so I, I think I understand what you're talking about. You talk about the um, the higher senses right. that we once had. Um, how are we going to gain that back? Uh, well, throughout the years, our master teacher has given us uh, pieces of information. Would it be through the supreme mathematics, both of the holy tablets, and even now to the Pataraks? Um, he never explained it that it was a gradual process of um, our children, you know, us going through certain things, and our children are just all of a sudden going to develop these things. Rather, it's a surgical thing, meaning it was surgically removed, you know what I'm saying? And now it has to be put back in. And the test that we're undergoing in life will. Uh, render whether or not we are worthy to receive those gifts again. Because we cannot, it's going back to what the brother was speaking about earlier, we are still, still in the mindset set of six ether, or six ether mind, graduating or gradually progressing to nine mind, you know what I'm saying, in a form of the wow. And look how long it took for us to get there in the first place. You know what I'm saying? It took 30 years just to get us away from the distractions. And now we're back in the year 1963 or 1967 again. You know what I'm saying? You have to remember when the when the um, the nine ball series was published, we weren't ready for that because we were thinking on what level, not on our level of thinking, not on culture. You know what I'm saying? We was thinking on his level, although we had an awakening in our DNA in the '60s, but we felt it was time to be cultivating again. But our mind was not ready yet, so it took those 30 years just to prepare our mind to just accept the first step in Wu You know what I'm saying? And this is what we're being fed now. You know, and a part of the test that we have to undergo is living for of and by each other, mastering our language, which will render destroying or um, freeing us from most of the spell. You understand? Showing that divine love one for another. And the question is, are we doing that those things as a whole? You know what I'm saying? Because that's what we have to look at. It's us. Because remember, it's gonna be the, the, uh, certain people will wake up. You know, throughout the years, if you remember some of the books, some people will wake up and have those abilities. Uh, some of our children would have it, you know what I'm saying? Those are things that he put out there. But one thing that is repetitive, you know, when you first asked that question, I thought about it. One of the things that's repetitive, if you look at um, the actual facts, the Pathodox, he keeps letting us know their time is up. Their time is up. It's our time to rule. What does that mean? Our time to rule. That doesn't mean all of a sudden, poof, they just disappear and we just stand there in the positions and run things. Does it work that way? You know what I'm saying? It's time for us to rule ourselves and our kind. You know what I'm saying? It's time for us to not be on the residual frequency and start to vibrate on our own frequency. On nine mind, nine consciousness. Rule ourselves. Support each other. And we have the right forces in place to support that. It's us who it's us who have to vibrate on the higher vibration to reach those powers that's always been there. You have to remember, Panathado are interdimensional and extraterrestrial beings who reside in the omniverse. And they are sending affirmation from the omniverse, right, through the multiverses, through the triverses, through the dual verses, down to the universe, to you. But there are frequencies that's interfering. You know what I'm saying? But he made it clear in the books that those frequencies don't affect us unless we vibrate, unless we take our own vibration and Lower, lower it to that, to that particular vibration or those frequencies. But those powers are there as far as us uh, regaining our powers. The chants are given to us now, the tones, all the necessary keys to get ourselves calibrated. It's more than just a physical thing. It's a vibratory thing. You know what I'm saying? Because you're dealing with quantum physics. You're more than just a physical being. You know what I'm saying? You are, you are a quad being. You have a soul, you have a spirit. You vibrate in, uh, um, on a certain type of level. And this is what we have to get in right now. The affirmation is the, is the, is the transformational, you know what I'm saying, uh, information. Meaning that it transforms you from the inside out. It changes you. It grows you. So you have to grow into it to become worthy of it again. And that's how it works. You know what I'm saying? I hope that was helpful. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. <laughs> Any more questions at this time? By the way, where are your brothers traveling from? He, he says somebody came from uh, as far as Texas, right? Yeah. Dallas, Texas? Texas? All right. Where are you from, brother? I'm actually from here. Oh, from Georgia? Yeah, I'm okay. from Manhattan. From Manhattan? Yeah. Oh. 
Absolutely. Um, it's, 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 it's going back to the fundamental inf uh, information that Padma Babi Anun has been trying to make us aware of for the, for the last 30 years before we step back to the Wudu'a. First of all, realize as long as we're in this system and the society, we cannot succeed. We cannot properly grow or cultivate ourselves or breed the right kind of children who are taken to the next level. You know what I'm saying? That's a factor. You have an educational system set in place to do what? To miseducate. And it's a dictation. What are they teaching you in school that's about you? Are they teaching anything about your, uh, about your history, who you are, where you come from, or even about your body structure and how you're calibrated as an African? Go back to the point the brother brought up earlier before. You are calibrated a certain way. Like our master teacher brought, uh, uh, brought forth in one of the updates uh, a while back, right? At one point in time, we bathed in the sun for nine hours a day. You know what I'm saying? We are, we are starving from the sunlight. Certain things that's needed from the sun that vibrates with our body, and we're missing that. And the longer that we are here in an environment that is unnatural to us, right, the more we mutate, especially when you have more children here. Past the fourth generation, it's a mutation. This is why all the allergies and things like that, right? So that's one thing, education. What else? Food, the diet that we're eating. What are we eating that's African? That's African from Africa, grew in the roots of Africa. I put you this way, you can take an orange and plant it in different parts of the planet. Guess what? Where that orange is planted, the nutrition will come out different. Right. If you plant an orange in the Caribbean, mm -hmm. it will taste different. Mm -hmm. It will feel different to your body. If you plant an orange <clears throat> in, let's say, in America, right? It's a different taste. If you plant one in Africa, it's a different kind of nutrients because of the position of the sun, the nutrition um, in, the, in the earth, the kind of water, right? The, 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 the things that may have died there, all that affects how it grows. And that's natural nature, right? Calibrated that way. So as an African, we grew where? As we were taught by, by Nuwapu. Where did we grow originally? Our, our seed, our, our root seed grew where? In Africa, in Africa, exactly. And throughout time, they took us and grafted. Remember, he said it took them 400 years to take that African and make them into a Negro. 400 years. You know what I'm saying? That means it took us from nine, and it took them 400 years to make us vibrate on six, or, and even lower. You understand? So that's another thing. Genetic alteration of us through rape or through seduction. You know what I'm saying? So they attacked us physically, they attacked us mentally, they stripped us of our spiritual ties to nature and to our ancestors. What does that do to us as individuals or as a whole? Because they separated us from, from whole. Remember, we left tribal and gave us the mentality of being individuals. Mm. I got to get my own. I got to make it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's what it's all about. It's pumped through the music. It's all about the worship of the dollar bill. Mm. Mm. On purpose, you give, keep you what? distracted from focusing on what really truly matters and that's developing the inner qualities of your being developing your mind your spirit and your soul and reaching your heights and making that connection with your ancestors which is necessary for your transformation you know what I'm saying so a game was played on our minds you have the Luciferians and then you have the Satanists you know what I'm saying and those are extraterrestrial entities who utilize the Mokasu you know what I'm saying to exercise their will on this planet one is, is dealing with mind control, and the other is dealing with energy control. And it's all about where we align ourselves. Because to each is sent a what? A warner. Say that again? A warner. Who is our warner? So he's trying to get us from one kind of frequency and back on our own frequency again. It's up to us to do that. So we have to reach our powers again by doing that. Otherwise, we miss it. You understand? So that's what it's all about right now in the same time. We have to develop ourselves. 
You know what I'm saying? And we, we cannot do it with the most important element, each other. You understand? That gathering, coming together is necessary. We have to do it with each other. We have to gather. We have to greet each other. I have to say, put kawun to you and mean it from my heart. My heart. You understand? We have to sit down and study the wapping. We have to chat together and raise our vibration as a whole. Each other. And when we do that, we start to develop that nine mind again. That nine mind, as it speaks about in the conscious being. Anybody here read the conscious being? Yep. There's a point in the conscious being that I, I like to break up. And it deals with uh, residing on the etheric. etheric. Okay, here we go. It took me a while, but I found it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to start from verse 61. Um, know that every event that takes place in the physical realm is imprinted, a thought form in the ethereal, yet most fade over time. Um, I'm going to stop, stop there for a second. This is dealing with, we know that there are different levels of vibration that intertwines here. You know what I'm saying? And this, this deals with the state of existence. You have the Chatat, right, which is the etheric state. You have your Ba'a, which is your what? Physical body. No, 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 your Ba'a is what? Your soul, exactly. I'm sorry, Ka'u is your etheric state. Your Ba'a is your soul, you know what I'm saying? Or the Akbar, they said, that ascends and, and takes your spirit. And your spirit is your what? That's right. Your Kha is your spirit. And then you have your Chatat, which is your physical flesh. So this is dealing with the etheric state, right? Mortals that is, that is very physical humans live in the slowest frequency or level, in the field of vibrations as is to be expected. The higher levels in the fields of vibrations are composed of the fasa tawalat frequencies. Entities that exist within these levels think and act much faster than those in the lower levels or slower planes. And their mental states are much more unified. You hear that? That's a key word. And this is the point I was trying to make. And this is dealing with the ethic state, right? We have ethic parents called what? Called Etherians, right? Who are responsible for our ethic existence that we are linked to. So again, and their mental states are much more unified in pa paput, the all, a group mind called mental. As some descend through the field, gravity increases dragging down thought into separateness, allowing for the development of individual consciousness, choice, will, and easy access by demon forces, who dwell on the lowest level, waiting to step in to their khatat, bodies, take over the akalat, minds, use their emotion, then once they cause them to do something or say the wrong thing, they move on to the next shakas, person. That's that inner voice that leads many to their deaths, or to fights, and even kill, and they walk in. So this right here covers a lot of different points. It covers the fact that at one point in time, we were in a state of a mental unification, right? In the etheric state, which is a higher state than this, which is beyond the mind. Remember, the mind is on four, and while being physical, and, and do me a favor, if I'm moving too fast, if anybody get confused, we hear, you know, ask questions. Trust me, you know what I'm saying? So, your soul is linked to your ether. Your spirit is linked to your soul. And that is all being worked through your physical body while being here. Together we exercise soul, or your divine emotions, right? Your physical is linked to your what? Your personality, which personifies based upon your environment. Your environment adds to your spirit, or your personality, and even those who you encounter. You know what I'm saying? But your, but your soul is divine. That's the divine principle or that divine emotion. And the first step to those divine emotions is to learn to do what? Learn to care. Right? Learn to love each other in the Wapin. Learn to see that each Wapin is you and you are each other. Are those the principles that Panababi Adun has given us today? So these are the different kind of stages that will render our frequency to vibrate higher. Our ancestors reside on a higher frequency, and it is up to us to raise our vibration to meet them. 
And that's the fact that's happening now. And we are given the tones and the tools today. Has anybody here been keeping up with the updates on Tuesdays online? Yeah, we post them online on wunuwap.com. Check it out. Check out affirmation classes. You know what I'm saying? And um, this one in particular, I would suggest you look into. And that's the one on the, I think it was the 30th. Now, did it? When we speak about our master 24? Uh, that was um, the 24th. The 24th. You know what I'm saying? Check that out because it's, it's the most recent. Because our master teacher said, I've always said that love and unity is the key. But he said, I've never told you which keys. And that deals with the tones. You know what I'm saying? The A, F, and C. A is what your, your natural vibration as an African, the highest aspect of A. You have your highs, you have your mids, and you have your lows which links to the F frequency, which is what? The planet resonate on the F frequency. The high, the mid, and the lows, which links to the C, which is a frequency of natural nature. And is that not what our master teacher is teaching us now? Learn the natural nature of our nature? You know what I'm saying? We've been thinking on that frequency for so long that we forgot this. And this is why every 25,000 years, our warner has to reincarnate to reinform or reform us of who and what we are and put us on that vibration again. You understand? I'll take the next question. I tell you. I tell you, brother. Uh, my question is uh, dealing with uh, the spell of the Via then. I was wondering if there's any connection with um, the Via then with the name Levi and the Levites. Along with that, being if that is the spell of king, when we call each other kings, or we continue to cast spells on on ourselves. That's a very powerful observation, and I would say yes, that is the that is the case. You know, what I'm saying the spell of Leviathan was administered by the Levites or the priests of Leviathan. You know, what I'm saying if you look at the in the book of Leviticus, right, the Levites were the ones who were preparing the meals for their overlords. If you give my drift, you know what I'm saying? If you've been keeping up with the uh, new affirmation, our math teacher has been showing us how the gods of the Bible are flesh and blood eaters and drinkers. Right. If you read the book of Levit Leviticus, it is a cookbook on how to prepare meat. You know what I'm saying? How to take a, 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 a living creature, animal or human, and sacrifice it in front of the Lord or before the Lord. You know what I'm saying? What choice meats to have. You know what I'm saying? And their best choice meat was the Mukasu, the Caucasian. You know what I'm saying? So yes, the Leviticus or the Levites dealt with, with that particular aspect. And that's a mindset. You understand? And yes, Kingu, and I remember that years ago, and Rabbi Anun brought that up. The word king comes from the word Kingu. And that was a Sumerian way of saying this, the same spell, Leviathan. Because Leviathan deals with the Hebraic. And Kingu, of course, we know the link between the Habaru, you know what I'm saying, or the Israelites, and Mesopotamia. It's the same doctrine. It's the same gods that they worship. You know what I'm saying? The Anakim, the Moloch, the Sarafu and Kharabu. And they've been feeding them for the last thousand, six thousand years. Wow. And trying to put us on the menu. Mm -hmm. This is why the breathing is taking place or, t or trying to tie into our vines so they won't be on the menu. You understand? I would I would highly recommend that you read this book. Uh, this Patarat. What's the name of the book? It's called Sarafu wu Kharabu. Oh, right in front of my face. This one right here. You know what I'm saying? This one as well as um, this right here and many other scrolls that came out that really goes into that, into those particular stories. Mm -hmm. So those are the gods of the Bible and of Mesopotamia. You have to remember the Anunnaki were the deities of Mesopotamia and the Nathado were the deities of Abaf Rehe Kau, or Africa, right? And they operated on the frequency of love. You know what I'm saying? It was two different frequencies. The whole Tower of Babel story was speaking about a certain frequency was emitted. That was, that was able to control those group of people. You know what I'm saying? So, I hope that helped answer your question. Any more questions at this time? That's right. And with that question, I will rotate the class to my good brother, Atum Ray. 
Atun Hutem Embray Atum Ray. Yes, sister. Okay, when you um when you stated that we are not in our natural nature as far as not being in Africa, how is that so when how could you say when someone's a new means natural nature when it wasn't isn't it so that some new means were here in America or what is considered America today before it got split? That's why when I was speaking earlier, I said before America was established, you have to remember that the continents were connected. It was, we were the same people. I said when they took us from then when they were separated, right? Mm -hmm. The tribes that were already here, which is the same family, you got two, the same family, it's not separate. You know what I mean? It's just that it was one landmass, right? This is your home, right? What happened is, Family was over here, and family was over here, right? Pyramids in Egypt, pyramids in South America. Yeah. When the continental drift came, that split apart, so you're dealing with the same beings. What happened is, when the Caucasians colonized, right? What they did was, they came into America and wiped out the Native Americans, which are the Omax or the Nubans, which is our people. So when they did that, they supplanted their culture in, over top of that. You feel me? So this is still our land, but you're practicing their culture. Well, I understand that, but I'm saying as far as like, when you say like you're not eating this, the right food that you like, well, you give an example about an orange. Yeah, okay, this, I, I see what you're saying. See, what happens is this. We're grown by the planet. Like I was saying earlier, this right here adapts to its environment. When you were over here, the tribes were over here. This is the same tribe they adapted to the foods and stuff that was in that environment. You feel me? Just like the ones over here. So you got to understand that when you when you deal with Africa, right? You got desert parts of Africa, you got marshlands of Africa, and you got you got forest parts of Africa. Like you know, you know, this this jungles and stuff like that, right? Different tribes adapt to different situations in that even though you're from that continent, right? You know what I'm saying? So what happened is, wherever was they were at, they adapted to that environment. Mm -hmm. So this is why, when you go to Sahara Sudan, they have a certain culture they practice in the desert environment. Meaning that you can't eat certain type of food because it will cause your body to heat up, right? That's why they eat a lot of dry foods in desert regions. You feel what I'm saying? Anybody understand what I'm saying about that, right? Mm -hmm. Like couscous and certain different foods or not the same. You couldn't eat. The, you couldn't eat McDonald's in a desert area. You you mess your body up. You know what I mean? Because it doesn't go in accordance to the environment. Mm -hmm. You can't eat steak. Based on how your body adapted. Exactly. To so they've been doing this for millenniums, mm -hmm. not like 10, 15 years or 400 years. We talk about thousands of years. You feel me? That they were able to survive in desert. You go to desert, like, oh, it's too hot. It's too. I'm. 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 I'm you know. So you're saying you, that your natural nature can change. It can change only because of what's been injected inside of you. You feel what I'm saying? This is why when you read the book called the um, Mind Account of DNA, certain extraterrestrial species couldn't survive on this planet Earth. So when they were creating hybrids, they had to put their DNA in the Mind Account so these beings able to be, they were able to adapt to the environment. That's why in the first chapter or, or the introduction to the Black Book, it brings out how they had to alter the environment so they could be it's suitable to them physically. Certain Africans can't stay in certain Africans because of the mixture. You feel me? Because you're looking, you, you're looking at the African different now as an African of two, two, um, thousands or millions of years ago. When you mix it with different species, you change, you change the environment. Meaning that if I, if I bring a rat and a cat together, I mean a rat and a bat, I mean a rat and a bird, you create a bat, this, then you change the environment because now it, it hunts differently and it hunts different animals, so it changes the ecology. You feel me? So it's your like, nature is determined. It can be determined. No, because what you gotta also remember too that nature is it, it changes. You know that, right? So if you bring something in the environment, nature nature will adapt to it also. It's, it's, it's both ways it goes, right? You adapt to each other. Sometimes nature has to change to accommodate you, and sometimes you have to change to accommodate nature. But sometimes when nature feels that okay, look, you're destroying me, so I have to kill you. <laughs> You understand know what I'm saying? So what happened is when the Mikasa came into America, he upset nature and threw off the natural ecology of the land. Because he was doing certain things in the land that he was not supposed to do. You think about crop um, you're thinking about crop formation? They were growing 
crops and not rotating the crops. Meaning that if I put apples here, right, I'm taking all the natural minerals out of the soil to grow these apples, right? But I'm not putting nothing back. And each year you're growing apples to the point that the earth becomes what? Like, like no good. It can't, it can't produce any seed. So what happened is us as the Garo, we knew about that. Because we've had years, millions of years to, you know, to understand nature. They don't understand nature because they go against nature. So what happened is this is what happened in the 1920s with the Dust Bowl in the Midwest. That's when they were growing all the crops. That was the best land to grow you know, crops. You know what I'm saying? They were not doing crop um, rotation. And what happened, it became a dust bowl. You know what I'm saying? And what happened is when you take out the apples, next year you plant at carrots. The carrots will put something in it, but it takes something out of it, and it, it keeps the soil fertile. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm going to just say, when we talk about adapting to your natural nature, we are originally on the whole planet. You're not understanding this. What you're calling seasons didn't exist millions of years ago or thousands of years ago because the planet Earth was on this original axis. We are aquatic beings first, you hear me? And we came onto land. When the planet Earth was knocked off its rotation or to which you 25 point with the 25.44 degrees, it created this effect right here. If it's like this, we, that's the original that it was on. But if your axis is off like that, right? On a 25 degree angle, guess what happens? The planet is on a tilt, meaning that these two points, what you call a north and south pole, doesn't get as much light as the rest of the planet does. So what happened is because on a tilt, this receives six months of what? Uh, that means that it puts the, it put the planet in a freezing state, meaning that you have all type of ice form right here. So the water recedes from the ice being melted, I mean being frozen. So you got ice cubes up here, you hear me? And then for the next six months, it goes into what? Sunlight. But it's not enough sunlight to melt that, because it's so cold, you hear me? By the time it starts to melt, it goes back into what? Shadow, a shadow state again, it freezes, you hear me? Mm -hmm. Now what's happening right now is that the planet Earth is actually going back into its natural nature. This is why, I mean natural, um, Tilt, and this is why it's melting the ice and the polar bears are dying or they're migrating down into Alaska and mixing them with the grizzly bear is for survival. He okay, doesn't know that they're gonna survive in the heat temperature, so now they're interbreeding with the other bears in order to, to, to sustain their genetics. You know what I mean? So now what happens when this water melts? This was the same thing that happened millions of years ago when it little flooded the planet. He knew this was gonna happen. The flood, what you thought it was. The ice this is in a, this is in a black ball. You see? When it melted this, it caused the flood. They knew the time that was going to happen. This is why they had to get people off the planet. You feel me? So what happened is that for the last thousands of years, you have been adapted in America to a four-season environment that's not naturally a part of the planet. Because the planet Earth is off its axis, it created two more seasons. When actually, in ancient times, you only had two seasons. The dry season and what? Exactly. Now you got winter, fall, summer, and spring. And spring. You feel what I'm saying? Okay, so because nature changes, that's how you make Nature starts changing when different extraterrestrial beings start coming to this planet. Okay. You gotta understand that this. The, the confusion that's coming in with right now, right? Mm -hmm. Is that you're looking at it as absolute, like we're African. No, you're not a pure blood. Okay. No, nobody's in here is really pure blooded. We're, we're talking, when we talk about natural nature, we're talking about the pure-blooded African millions of years ago. Okay. Not the modern African that have been mixed in with other extraterrestrial species. So why do I hear, like, when somebody, somebody will say, you know, that's not, you know, like, they'll say that's not a woman's natural nature or a man's natural nature, but they natural nature can... When you, when you say a woman's natural nature, right, what is a woman's natural nature millions of years ago compared to... See, what happened, you got natural nature confusing with indoctrination, right? Meaning that, what is lady like? 